Tom and Amy, welcome. Hey guys. Hello. How you doing? Excellent. How are you? Good. Let me get this going. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hello, Tom. Wow. Nice. Tom, you got the signage in the back. Yes, sir. I That's like good. it. Awesome. Great to see you guys. And thanks. Uh, thanks for doing this. I mean, I, I, gosh, I, I'm, I'm like have a lot of nervous excitement about this conversation. So I'm, I'm like very excited to jump in and start like just catching up at large with where everything is at at this point. And I, I know we have a lot of gym owners that are, uh, I got a lot of responses, you know, a lot of people asking, will you guys be recording it? Will you be recording it? But, um, you know, from, from, from where we are now, from where the, the first month of the pandemic, I mean, I think there's a lot to catch up on and a lot of things on people's minds. So. Yeah, for sure. Especially with everyone in different States and just, I mean, yes. oh, yeah. the fitness industry hasn't had a whole lot of, you know, exposure and the ability to really get our voice out there too much until it was kind of too late in some States. So, so definitely on the same boat as you. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, uh, We'll, we'll definitely start with a little like status update from from the three of you. I think it has Ben joined yet, Coop? Not that I see, but there's a couple of aliases here, and I'll just run them by you. Do you know a Susan King? It should be like Noble Clay or Ben Davis, something. Yeah. I don't see. The only reason why I asked that because I know when Tom joined on, his originally was Katie, but I know Katie's his wife, so I was like, that's got to be Tom. Um, but yeah. I don't, I don't see anything for um, for Ben right now. That's cool. Well, I want to respect everybody's time. So why don't we start to let people in here? And then as you see Ben come on, let me know. You got it. The Royal Rumble's ben. about going and I'm going to admit some people in. We got about 10 people coming in here soon. Great. Sounds good. Are you, you're, you're, you're admitting everybody? Yep, they're coming in. Great. Well, welcome everyone who is now joining us. Um, we will give another two to three minutes here for other folks to log on. And then I will introduce our uh, guest panelists, speakers. I'm not sure what to call you guys other than uh, Tom and Amy and, and waiting on uh, uh, Ben Davis. We'll see if Ben uh, makes it on. Could be having some Zoom issues there. But um, for, and Coop, let me know, you like give me some body language if Ben joins. Um, but for uh, uh, Tom and Amy, for your benefit, we do have members of the NerdWise team who are, who are on, a um, handful of customers, friends. I'm sure we've got folks from inside FitBody and Eat the Frog that are uh, uh, either listening now or will be listening to this. Um, this is a, uh, a little bit of a different style format than what we've been doing. And I'm excited about it because even just between uh, Amy and Tom, you guys bring a couple of, uh, different perspectives to what's really going on in the fitness industry right now. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, uh, hopefully this guy, Ben Davis joins, cause I think he kind of represents the third piece, which is the, the people who are completely independent and have no support from a, a really a network of franchisees or a franchise. Um, and he's kind of been going it alone and also, just has a few things unique about his business. So I hope, I hope you can join, but um, the, uh, the format for today is going to be about 20, 30 minutes of discussion. I'm gonna introduce you guys shortly and give you a proper introduction. And then I wanna dig into like everything that's going on in, the, in, in your space and in the industry at large. I mean, Tom, you were just saying it's it really, I, I know for everybody I, for outside fitness, everything is week by week. And I know as it relates to fitness, as you're saying, Tom, it's state by state and week by week in many cases. So a lot of unique challenges here. I don't think anybody is kind of up against the same exact scenario. Uh, and and uh, is that, Ben, did you just join? Yeah, I did, I'm on. Awesome, great. So we've got Ben Davis here as well. Um, with that, I'm gonna introduce our, our guests. We have three folks uh, live with us. Um, I'm going to start with Amy. Uh, so Amy Bigler is the vice president of marketing for Eat the Frog Fitness. They have over 30 locations, and, and I think many of them are new and have been going into their grand openings uh, uh, during COVID. So um, excited to get a lot of perspective from Amy on, on where things are at. Then we've got Tom Huff. Uh, doesn't I don't think you say it how you spell it. 
<laughs> so, That's correct. Uh, and, and so Tom, Tom is an owner and you have an executive position with Fit Body Bootcamp, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and, and I think, Tom, I mean, I have to look back in, in our, our, our books, but I think you may be the oldest, longest standing customer we have. And I'm so proud of that. So thank you. Uh, and then Ben Davis, who is the owner of Noble Clay Fitness, uh, a, which is a very interesting uh, uh, fitness business out of Atlanta. Um, it, ben operates a nonprofit uh, gym, and and he, you know, I'll let Ben talk a little bit more about that. But uh, I caught up with Ben maybe a month ago, and he's up thirty percent from last year, which just blows my mind. And so I didn't dig into the the details with him, but very interested to hear a little bit more from from Ben as well. And so before we jump in, guys, I just want to say. Like, in my mind, you guys truly are heroes. And I mean it because, like, you are – the fitness industry has got to be one of the hardest-hit industries r right now. Uh, and I don't know – I mean, there, there are you – could, you could start with, like, healthcare and, and then work your way down. But, I mean, fitness is definitely one of the, the hardest-hit industries, um, particularly from the boom that fitness was experiencing. And so, you know, in a lot of ways, the rug has been pulled out from under you guys. But – the, the, the reason I say heroes is because these types of challenges, these types of times are what really build uh, character and call out the great virtues in all of us. And so I'm sure that, you know, as, as operators, as marketers, you've had to be more creative, work harder, uh, you know, do things in a, in, in a way that you haven't had to before. And I know the challenges that we've experienced on our side probably pale in comparison, but um, you know, the, if you guys survive this pandemic and, and, and the, 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 the muscle that you build metaphorically and all the learnings and all the things that, that come through these times, I'm sure that you are going to absolutely crush it when the dust settles and things get back to normal. Um, and there's also change. And so you guys are really on the front end of, of, of a lot of change and a lot of things that are happening. But um, I really, really mean it. I think that the, the that you guys are probably better operators and becoming, you know, uh, just just the, through through these challenges, just better, better, you know, business people, marketers, everything, right? Because um, you have to in, 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 under these circumstances. So, Amy, Tom, Ben, thank you guys for joining us, sharing your stories. Really appreciate it, and tr truly, you know, you guys are heroes, and I'm sure for. Your, you know, inside your members and your staff and all of that, that there's just a, a, a whole sense of, of uh, empathy and appreciation and everything that you're, that you're doing. So I want to go around. Um, let's let's keep the order. So I, like Amy, Tom and Ben, and, and if you wouldn't mind, like, give us a status update. Um, Amy, you know, you've got a vantage point of, of being, you know, running marketing for a franchise, but what's going on with Eat the Frog and how are you guys doing, um, you know, what, and, and I think a couple areas are just, are you know, are, who's open, who's closed, what kind of capacity yeah. are you guys seeing? Uh, how have you adapted? What's changed? I mean, just a, a two or three, maybe quick update on on what's the latest. And, and I know it's for you, you can't speak for all 30 locations and it's a little challenging, but would love to get an update from from the three of you and then we'll take it down a few levels from there. And, and uh, but yeah, Amy, if you wouldn't mind introducing yeah. yourself a little bit, be great. Well, I'm super happy to be on. Thank you, Patrick, for having me. Um, you know, obviously it's great to connect with other people in the industry because this is nothing we, you know, sitting in January and February, super happy who would have thought that this was going to be what our year looked like. And so as a marketer um, in general, let alone being in the fitness space uh, in, in franchising, having to learn so much this year and be so creative in your approach and just really understand that what you thought might work is not going to and to be really quick and adaptable has been something that has been uh, really a learning lesson I think for us. Uh, luckily we're a younger brand and you know we were having tremendous success uh, prior to COVID happening and so this obviously when this hit and we started to see the shutdown happen we had to adapt really quickly so one of the things we did was was immediately get our on-the-go product going really with the intention, honestly, of member retention. And that was our at-home workouts. Luckily, we already do programming uh, within our studios on our huge screens. And so we basically adapted that for the at-home the at home experience. And that was really able to help us keep our, our retention rates really high. As we started to see you know, COVID kind of drag out more months than we ever anticipated from the beginning, we had to really start rethinking what our strategy was because each state you know, is opening with the different requirements, with different capacity. You guys, right now we have studios that are almost 
back to full capacity. And then we have other ones like San Diego that they're running outdoor and that's only. And what's crazy is they're one of our fastest growing franchises doing only outdoor workouts in summer in San Diego. And so uh, I think that what we've seen is the teams that have been able to execute and really adapt quickly and be in, you know, honestly, insanely creative with the way that they're I don't want to say getting around, but the way that they're adapting to their local guidelines, that has been the key. And so really just uh, seeing some of these people rise, you know, even and, and grow their memberships in the middle of this, that's been incredibly encouraging. Uh, right now, almost all of our studios are back open, which is, which is really good, but we're truly varying right now from like in Covington, it's a corporately owned studio. So I can always speak a lot about that. We have really limited capacity. We can do a max of five people training at one time. And so one of the challenges that we really face that used to be a huge benefit of Eat the Frog is we're a 24 seven studio model, right? That's it's such a cool thing that we have. You can't run that with all these safety procedures that you're having to do with cleaning and things like that. So a lot of our, our 24 seven had to be shut down. So one of the ways that we adapted is we added a lot more coach sessions to the schedule. And so it does mean more coached hours, but it also means we can get as many of our members in as possible. We actually just did our grand opening for Covington in the middle of everything going on in COVID. We're here in, in Covington, just so you guys know, is just outside of Seattle, Washington. So as you guys can imagine, we've got a lot of restrictions here and what we can and can't do still, and we're in an early phase. So um, we just had to adapt. We have to be really cognizant of that. And we've been really lucky with our members being incredibly loyal, considering we hadn't even opened our doors yet. And we are growing and we're focusing on referral programs because what we really identified early on is those people that were loyal and they wanted to work out regardless of the, the capacity or the new rules, um, they were your biggest advocates. And so we have done really successful referral programs with zero advertising, which is kind of crazy um, coming up. And so we're trying to extend those from the, from the franchisor point of view, what we've had to do that's very unique is like, you know, we're used to this 12 month marketing calendar where we roll it out and second COVID happened that flew out the window. You can't do that when every studio is at a different phase. So we've had to really do things that are adaptable for the studio, really um, work with the agencies about doing things that are more localized. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But really, <coughs> oh my goodness, I swallowed wrong. Um, for us, it's just, it, it's been about adaptation. And what we're seeing is the people who are highly successful are the people that do it quick and are very creative and, and they just don't stop executing. That's the thing. They don't wait. They don't stop. They're aggressive. Um, and they're, they're, they're trying everything they can to stay positive. And I know that's really, really hard in this moment to stay positive when you don't know what's coming next. But some good news on our front, we executed two more leases today. We have studios going into pre-sale that are seeing the best lead generation we've ever seen, ever. We um, actually have more people. We've got training next week for new franchises opening. Um, we're, we're seeing, I don't want to say the tides are turning, but it kind of feels like it. You know what I mean? I'm very optimistic that we might be turning that corner. So very, very exciting things for us that people are executing leases that we're starting to see all of that momentum happening again. And we have multiple, if you watch us over the next couple of months, we're going to probably have about five studios enter pre-sale in the next like 30 to 45 days. And our pre-sale studios are starting to see more success than we did even almost earlier in the year, which is, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it on that note. If you guys have any questions, hit me up, but I, I feel like we're starting to see a little bit of a positive shift finally. And so just really kind of holding on to that and hoping that that's the direction we move in. I, I, I love that. I do think acting fast is a theme that uh, is a, anybody, anybody who can move quickly right now. I think the folks who waited and thought that this was going to go away and things were going to get back to normal, that they're the ones who suffered and also didn't build that culture quickly of adapting. And I, so I, I, I hear you loud and clear on that. And I also just saw New York City is, is reopening uh, restaurants at 25% capacity. They just announced, I think, today or, or yesterday. So hopefully that does mean we're turning a corner. Um, and yeah, thanks, Amy. That's uh, great to hear. And Tom, you want to jump in and tell us what does the world look like from uh, Richardson Fit Body, Fit Body at Large, and yeah. how are you guys doing? Yeah, so I have a, 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 a interesting perspective because I'm both an owner and I have the, the opportunity to work for our headquarters as a, as a business coach, and I have about 75 locations that I coach. So I get to see the different levels of it. <clears throat> and a lot, I'm going to speak to a lot to what Amy just said of, Number one, first and foremost, what we're seeing, you know, both in my location and across the board is 
you know, the locations, the owners, the business owners that are willing to pivot, to pay attention, to take fast action and execute without asking questions and just moving forward are the ones that are being the most successful. Um, I would say across the board average for FitBody, as far as business lost during COVID is about 30, uh, well, I'd say 25 to 50% is kind of the, the average that we're seeing. And I would say that that lower end, that 25, 20 to 25% are the folks that really focused on retention, had a really strong business going into COVID and had a really strong membership base to be able to, to hold on to that. And then what we did first thing was focused on retention, just as Amy mentioned, which was number one, we, we kind of realized that, you know, and back to the point earlier, Patrick, you know, the one thing about the fitness industry, God bless us all, we were demonized for, for a little while with, you know, gyms are dangerous, gym, don't go to a gym, you'll be surrounded by people. And for studios like us, where we're able to control the people that are coming in, we know them, we can have protocols in place. It was really, really unfair. I'm very fortunate that we live in Texas and we, we actually opened back up on uh, Memorial Day. But, um, you know, there's the pivoting, moving quickly and, um, and taking action. So we focused on retention first. We ran a couple of free uh, challenges for our members, kind of a stay at home challenge. We immediately within 48 hours of the very first shutdown went online. So we had a virtual option at all of our locations where at first we were all shooting them first within our studios. And then we actually went and busted out over, I think we're at 150 ish workouts now that were recorded by headquarters that we can provide to our to our membership so they can work out anywhere, anytime from home. And so just kind of looking at big picture, as you mentioned before, with like getting stronger as we go through this, look at the opportunity in it where we now offer a hybrid program. We did not have a virtual program before. Now we always will. We always will have an at-home program. In my studio, we just recorded our 140th you know, at-home workout. So I have a, a great library of at-home workouts that we can do anywhere, anytime. Um, and then I would say the other piece of it is just, you know, kind of trying to look ahead as much as we can with, you know, what, what's happening next. Amy, I, I'm in agreement with you. These last, for me personally, these last five weeks, it finally felt like we were kind of starting to turn the corner where new people were coming into our studio, which is really exciting to see. I also coach, I have four locations that either have opened or are getting ready to open within in these last few months. And they've all had a, not a, not an overly challenging time getting leads, getting people to sign up for their grand opening special. Um, because at the end of the day, I think one thing that we really were reminding our ownership of a lot, and I was on my, my coaching calls was folks, they don't have another option. So like, if you are only online, they're, that's what they're going to do. So it's not like your program isn't worse because that's only that's the only thing you can offer. It's the only option. So um, and that also was kind of in line with having a really good program beforehand for the members you already had. Um, you know, the, there were there were ones that were going to leave and quit and cancel, but they were probably going to leave and quit and cancel anyway. This was just their reason to do it. But the folks that stuck on, my gosh, did we see and are we seeing the absolute best? out of people and then the not so best out of some other people, but that's okay. I think it's a really big changing of the guard, both within our businesses where, you know, some members are going to leave and we have to be okay with that because the ones that are stick around and the ones that are going to have the courage to come in right now might be the best clients we ever have. And then same thing, just overall across the industry, you know, the gyms that leave, even within Fit Body Bootcamp, I love every single one of our owners. My heart goes out to every one of them, especially the ones that are struggling. But for those of that, that closed their doors because they didn't take action, um, it's kind of a, a thinning of the herd right now. And that, that's true in all industries, I think. And the last thing I'm going to say, I listened to this really great little snippet from Russell Brunson um, at this event that he was at. And uh, a, a person in the, in the crowd asked, hey, Russell, do you have, so when you market and you advertise about ClickFunnels, you know, you always talk about kind of the, the money that's generated, these, these success stories. Do you feel any obligation to the hundreds, thousands, millions of people that buy your services, buy your products, and they're never really successful? Um, like, do you, how do you feel about that? And he went on to talk about at one of his funnel hacking events where he had someone speak on stage and the, the person talked about um, when there is a flood or a sinking ship, do you know how the people in the helicopter decide who to save? And the answer is they decide who to save 
as to who is swimming towards the helicopter. And I just think that is a great thing to think about as business owners right now. If you are not asking for help, taking every opportunity, knocking on doors, asking for referrals, running Facebook ads, trying the next thing, trying the next thing, trying the next thing. And if you're lucky enough to work with someone like Nerdwise or Amy and her marketing department or me as a, as a cap coach, if you're not making those phone calls, getting in on your, your trainings, whatever your, your opportunities are, if you're in a coaching group, if you're in a mastermind and you're not asking those questions and asking for help, then you're the person not swimming towards the helicopter and you, you're, there's a chance you're not going to be safe. So I just think this was like the biggest eye opener for, for business across the board on those that are going to survive and those that are not. You, you gave me goosebumps, Tom. Thank you. That was, that was, that was an incredible analogy. And, and uh, yeah, I think you, it, you nailed it. I mean, if you're out there looking for help, you'll, you're, you're, the chances of you finding it or you're being creative, looking for solutions, trying the next thing, trying the next thing, and doing all this, your, 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 your chances of being successful and getting lucky go way up. Well, uh, especially but, now, too, I would say, sorry, one more thing, the attention, right? So we always, we always our, our goal, and Amy could probably attest us as a marketer, um, is to always, we're looking to get, get attention, right? We're trying to get somebody's eyeballs, get their attention, say, hey, I have a thing that could help you. But we're now up against the biggest attention grabber we've ever seen in our lifetime of doom and gloom, COVID, the president, and all this madness that's going on every single day. And so if you think that you don't have to raise your hand right now and just gonna come to you, you're, you're extra crazy than, than just being in regular times. Yeah, I, I, I love, love all of that. Um, ben, from, from your perspective, as a, a, a guy who you know, I don't know. I don't know what your whole support system behind you looks like, but I know that you're not part of a franchise, and 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 you know, you've got Nerdwise helping you. But what's what is your perspective been going into COVID now? I don't know what we are six months six months into it. Um, you know, tell tell us a little bit about what what uh, the world looks like from Noble Clay's perspective. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I guess you know maybe the the first place I could start is kind of. Just, uh, just sharing a little bit about what Noble Clay is, because it is a, somewhat of a new kind of gym. Um, you know, I spent most of my career as a strength and conditioning coach um, in CrossFit. I had a CrossFit gym, and then I ran into a franchise called Iron Tribe for a few years. And, um, you know, in 2018, we launched Noble Clay out of my garage um, with, a, with a desire, uh, a dream, really, to bring top-notch fitness coaching uh, to all people in the community. We saw a massive disparity of who has access to quality fitness coaching uh, or fitness studios, be it a fit body, be it a, you know, orange there or any of these others. Um, and in, in Atlanta where we are located, there is a, there's kind of a, a line of the Southeast and Southwest quarter of Atlanta where these disparities take place. And there's, there's not only a fitness desert where there's not fitness gyms around, but there's also food deserts quite hard to, to get access to any kind of quality food um, other than like a church's chicken or some sort of fast food kind of set up. And so uh, naturally, because of that, there are, um, uh, there's a health crisis in the minority communities. And, and so um, we've had a, a heart for, um, you know, the minority community in this way for several years. And this is where Noble Clay was, was kind of birthed out of. Um, and so, uh, you know, our dream is to, is to provide top-notch coaching to all members of the community through this nonprofit model. Um, and we've structured it as a nonprofit, um, though I founded it, I'm not the owner of it. I tell people like I, I, you know, we have a board that governs us and if I'm not doing my job, I get fired. Um, so I, I though I started it, it's not something that, uh, that I own in any, in any way. Um, but I'm very passionate about it and we're looking to solidify the model here in Atlanta. And then our dream is to have one in every state. Um, we, we've, we've already done the market research and seen in most uh, major cities within the states, there are neighborhoods of uh, pockets of these cities where, um, you know, there's a juxtaposition of affluent uh, affluency and, and under-resourced. Um, and those, those neighborhoods tend to, to butt very closely to each other in, in many of the cities. I mean, if you go to Miami, you go to, you know, St. Louis, you go to any of the major cities you see it, Chicago, New York, and so on. Uh, so, um, so we, we launched Noble Clay uh, in, in its first location at the beginning of this year. And as you know, in March, we, you know, enter into this pandemic. Um, and we've, we felt quite fortunate because we've decided to execute a model called individual design model. 
Um, it's a hybrid of, of kind of a group coaching model with, uh, with personal training. Uh, we've, we've, we've been partnered up with uh, OPEX. They're our sponsor. They develop all of our coaches, uh, James Fitzgerald out of Arizona. And so, um, and so, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've begun this model and, uh, the reason why we felt fortunate is because we use a platform called true coach where we, uh, come in and assess every, every client, every, every member and, and, uh, develop their program for them. Uh, and then we go through a reassessment to see if, if their program's working or not. Uh, and then we refine that process. Um, and so we're using true coach to deliver every person's workout inside the gym from January to March when COVID came, it was a, it was a quick pivot for us. We were able to then just easily pivot to, um, to home workouts, um, developing their personalized training, um, in their, in the comfort of their home with whatever equipment they, they had. And because they had that, that, that access to a, to their own coach who knows, uh, you know, what, what, that, what they need in their program, uh, based on the assessments that they've, they've gathered and what they need to prioritize in order for them to reach a state of vitality in their life it was, you know, that, that has been something that's been um, highly valuable to, um, to the member. Um, and so, so because of that, they're getting results and they're continuing to get results. And I think that's why we've, you know, we, I think we started um, uh, COVID in March, we had 59 members and we're close to a hundred now um, from that, from, from through, through COVID. So we've grown quite a bit and I would attest it to the, to two things. One um, I think the biggest thing is trust, trust on two fronts. One, um, the trust with this entire environment that we're living in. Um, immediately what we did is we connected with some friends of ours um, who one is an infectious disease doctor, a fellow at an Emory hospital. And we put together a team of four advisory uh, board members that advised us on this pandemic. And so when we front faced that, we communicated that to the community and said, Hey, we have these, you know, doctors that are advising us on what we should do. And, and when we, when we open, we had a, a good plan in play. And so because of that, we, we immediately had trust within our community. Um, and so that's one angle of the trust. The other, second angle of the trust is that all of our members were um, being assessed and reassessed during COVID at home using some, some assessments that we used uh, at home assessments, and they were seeing progression in their, uh, in their program and in, in their training. Um, that on top of the nutrition coaching and the lifestyle coaching with dealing with stress and, and helping people through doing simple things, what we call basic lifestyle guidelines, like sleeping well, um, going for long walks and reducing stress, getting out into the grass, getting out in the sun, um, you know, drinking half your body weight in ounces of water every day. These kind of just basic kind of lifestyle guidelines, just helping people through that. They immediately see, um, uh, you know, uh, great results. And so there was trust built from that. Um, and then that has led into referrals. You know, NerdWise helped us put together a referral campaign that um, that kind of highlighted this stuff. And it was not it wasn't hard for our members to refer people to us, even amidst the pandemic. So I, I think that those are if I were to nail why why we've grown, how we've grown, it's been because of um, because of those factors. And if I put one word on it; it'd be trust. Um, and I like uh, I, I'm sorry I forgot the gentleman's name. It just spoke, spoke before, but I, I like what he said with the, with the helicopter. For us, we thought about it as like a buffalo. You, you know what buffaloes do when a storm comes in life? They go directly to the storm, knowing that if I proactively approach that storm, the faster I get through it, the faster there's going to be green grass on the other side to eat. Um, whereas other herd animals, what they do is they run away and they 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 run from the storm, and so the the actual impact of that storm lasts longer in their life, and they don't get to the green grass as quickly and so we've kind of taken this kind of buffalo mentality of you know let's go ahead and face this thing head on proactively as best we can as positively as we can and uh, and get through it together and that that kind of mentality is as as um seem to be doing do us very well um so we're growing we're actually looking for our second location now uh in the southwest part of atlanta we're currently in the southeast um so we're looking for our second location in atlanta um, and the way the model works, just to kind of clarify that in y'all's minds, is uh, we've essentially created the, the kind of like the YMCA of functional fitness. So the YMCA is a scaled membership model. We use a scaled membership model based on people's income levels, and um, and they pay what they can based on their income level. Um, and so, you know, uh, essentially we have roughly about 50% affluent members and 50% um, uh, you know scaled memberships uh, that we subsidize. Uh, and then we have a, a donor base that helps undergird some of that. Um, and so 
that's in, in, in terms of unit, unit economics, that's our model. Um, and uh, again, we're, we've created that model just so that we can go in and, and address racial injustice and just uh, address, you know, the health crisis that, that adversely affects our minor, minority communities, uh, et cetera. And so, so that's, uh, that's been what we're doing. And it's been exciting to, to, to see, you know, the sustainability of the model through even a storm like the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. So, Wow. I mean, um, amazing stuff, Ben. I think that the, the, the Buffalo analogy, never heard that before. Beautiful. And I, I love that analogy. And then the trust piece, I think is so key. At, it always is, right? But I think if one thing COVID has done is it's really elevated the important things that, that matter. And, and trust is always, as in business, is always, and, and in, in life is always so important. And, and then the, the, the last, the other thing you said around you know, the at home uh, lifestyle, vitality, some of the things that you were touching on around going for a walk and getting outside and sleeping well and all of that. I mean, being able to have that deeper connection with your members and with the marketplace where you're and and then the true coach, the tool you said that was kind of helping you guys already have that virtual relationship. Um, all of that just makes so much sense. And uh, I love hearing it from you. And I love knowing that you're, you know, you're getting the results and that you're, 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 you're seeing what it is that's you know how you're attributing those those results but that's fantastic thank you for for sharing that um i want to i want to kind of and i do want to open it up because i know we've got other folks in here who probably have a lot of questions but you know I'm, I'm still waiting for the campaign i haven't seen it maybe you guys have done this but when 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 the fitness industry starts campaigning to drop the COVID 19 like it's the freshman 15 or something um i know i've i'm probably gained at least like the COVID 10 maybe COVID 20 so i'm somewhere in that range of someone who needs to drop the COVID-19, but, you know, in, in terms of like ramp, ramping back up and, and kind of, you know, if we're coming around the corner, um, my, my, I guess this is, this is my, my question to, to, you know, we can start again with Amy or you can, you know, pass the, 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 the mic uh, over to Tom, but what, what, what are the, what are the, uh, you know, before, before the pandemic, and I think even still to a degree, we, there's, we put these offers out there. Right, and we use an offer to get people in, to attract them, to get them off the couch, and to make fitness seem like it's not this massive undertaking. And hey, you can start for 21 days, or hey, come in for a free class, kind of something to warm people up to get them in. Um, what what types of things are you guys doing differently in terms of offers or attracting people in this environment? Because we have to imagine that even though we're coming around the corner, uh, uh, we're not. You know, we're not around the corner. So, yeah. what what types of offers, what types of things are you guys putting out there to attract new people now? And 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 you know, of course, like what's working? Um, if if you you know if you want to speak to it or again pass the mic, yeah. but we'd love to hear from you, Amy. Yeah, um, I'll hop in, hop in on this one, Amy, just because I have a little bit different with us having the location. Um, for it, it kind of it kind of ebbed and flow as we went through this. So the first thing was obviously going virtual when, when everything was shut down. So we were shut down for about two and a half months. So the offer there was, you know, working out at home doesn't have to be, um, you know, boring or you don't, you don't have to feel like you're alone doing it. Cause of course, when you're part of a fit body bootcamp or probably these other locations, you're part of a community. So, um, you know, still being able to have a coach, help them through it and really putting the, the point out there, like it doesn't look like COVID is going away. Like you don't have another choice. So why not work out from home, but actually have somebody help you? Cause, cause at that point we were, our competition other than COVID was these other gigantic virtual um, workout programs that, that specifically do that. But I, I know that the piece that they're missing or that is maybe harder to really get into at first is the community piece of it, where we already had that built. We already had that built with real people that came into our gym. So we were able to, to emphasize the community, having a coach and helping them with nutrition during the shutdown. As we opened back up, then it was, hey, we're open and your safety and your health is our number one priority. So literally putting that in our ad copy of, um, you know, we are clean, we're fun, we're friendly, um, advertising our protocol of what we actually do when people come in the gym, doing lots of Facebook lives of actually showing our, our eight by eight boxes where we were doing train in place so people weren't close to each other. And also explaining that you can work out in person or at home. So it was a lot more time on the phone talking to people, 
even though they would see our things and they would opt in, we would still need to, to kind of talk them into either coming in or doing virtual. Now that we're, we're further down the, down, oh, and then I even actually, I actually called the health, city health department and had them come out, even though we're not a restaurant and do a, do an inspection on us or, or watch, or watch our protocol. They loved it. So really advertising that. So it really went from like lose weight, feel great to like, you're not going to die if you come into our studio. <laughs> right. Um, and even, even to our own members, right. It, it was re advertising to our own members of like, Hey guys, we're going to open up. Here's exactly what we're going to do to have, have you in place. And we were just over communicating with them as we were leading up to opening, as I taped out the floor, as we got the hand sanitizer in, as we wrote the 25 page document from fit body bootcamp on exactly what to do, as we submitted that to the CDC, as we submitted it to the white house so that they were seeing like, wow, these guys are, are really going to take our, our health and letting them know we're not getting rid of virtual. That is still going to be an option, but we're ready for you, for you to come back when you, when you want to. We've even had people come in and sit and watch a workout just to see what we do before actually working out in person with us. Now that we're kind of hopefully, you know, on the other end, it is still that, that virtual or in person in our, in our advertising. So they have the option which can still can be a little bit confusing to people because if you have images of someone working out from home, but you also offer in person, or if you have in person, but they're, they're afraid to come in, it, it's still going to take a little more work from our admins and from our folks to, to, to explain the program to everybody. And then, yeah, we tried the, uh, you know, the drop the COVID-19 um, yes. might've been a little too early for it, but I think it will work now. We're getting ready for an eight week challenge that's starting on the 21st. Yesterday we opened up sales. 2,500 registrations within the first three hours of opening up sales. That's nationwide. Last challenge that we did during COVID, we did a free six-week challenge for our members, and it was really inexpensive for non-members when everybody was shut down, an at-home program. We had a total of 2,500 people nationwide in that challenge. So in three hours, we had 2,500 sales on this okay. next one. So people are ready. I feel like they're ready to come back. And so now it's, um, it's, yeah, it's coming out of COVID and getting their health back. And what I want to say before, a big part, what we worked on was for our members and for our other owners was mindset. Like this was a great opportunity for coaches in the fitness space to talk to your members. If you had never did it before about mindset, because they were being bombarded with losing their job, their kids not going to school, teaching them virtually, um, you know, all the, all the doom and gloom, like literally people calling us to cancel their membership. And we would ask why. And they would say, well, well, you know, because of everything that's going on. Yeah, but why are you going to cancel your gym membership? You didn't lose your job. You don't have COVID. We're still offering. Like, so just like getting people out of that negative mindset, I think was a huge, I know it was huge for me because it kept me going. And then when you, ever, you, can, you can teach somebody else that it really helps your members to, to kind of have that infinite mindset and realize that this situation is going to make you stronger. And then taking the things that we learned, like now having the virtual program. And I mean, there were so many things that, that we look at as opportunities through this, um, that we would share that with our membership base so that they could get those real life examples. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Great, great, uh, great experience to, to, to share. And uh, I, I think as well, like the using the, the, the term COVID-19 in marketing probably was too soon a few months ago, but I do think it's, People are legitimately feeling it now, right? They're settled yeah. in to uh, six months, five, six months. And now they're like, okay, like they want their life back. They want their health yes. back. They want their, you know, they want their routine back. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I think it's, uh, that's, that's great stuff. And um, uh, I think it's, I think it's right. I mean, it is, it is, it makes sense. You know, the, 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 you have to be same to the first original points around You've got to be in front of it, you know, swimming to the helicopter. You got to be over communicating. You got to give everybody the attention. And I think that the mental health aspect you brought up there is becoming probably more important for you guys as health professionals to help people understand that, like, this is, you know, like with all the things that are going on, this is m more important now. Your health is more important than it than than ever because you, yeah. you got all these other things going on. So you got to 
do what you can to stay balanced. Uh, and, and, yeah, and the other thing we're focusing on right now is, you know, typically in the fitness space, November, December could be a little bit slower because what, what are we up against at that point is the holiday season. People want to wait until New Year's. They want to wait until they're through the holidays because they know they're going to gain weight. So if we don't capitalize right now in September and October, then I would expect crickets for these next four months. I mean, not crickets, but you're, you're already going to have, that's already kind of our annual COVID time, right? Challenging time for us anyway. So we need to take action right now so that we can go into New Year's even stronger than, than where we are. So if anyone's thinking about, you know, waiting, do not wait, get a challenge going right now to get them stronger. So this way, when holidays hit this year, guys, I feel that it's going to be even harder for our members if they're not able to see their family, if their kids are, are not really in school, out of school, depending on where you live, the holiday breaks is going to be, it's just going to be different. We've all, we've all spent so much time. People have spent so much time with their families that when the holiday break comes around, it might not really feel like a break, right? That stress level is still very high. So kind of prepping them to have some time for themselves every day to work out and get that get that routine in place. So when the holidays rolls around, it doesn't completely blow them off. Cause if they put on 15 to 20 during COVID and they normally put on another 10 to 15 during the holidays, then 2021 is not going to be looking too friendly to the waistline. Once that, once that starts. Yeah. I saw it. I saw a tweet from somebody that said he started running cause it was the only way he could have alone time away from his <laughs> family. Uh, and yeah, I mean, whatever it's it, that people need, need their outlets now. Um, a Amy and, and Ben, anything around offers or promotions, what you guys are doing, differently or, or how you're attracting new folks uh, now? Anybody, if anyone wants to jump in and add to that. I've got a quick add to that because obviously Tom and a lot of what you're doing right now and a lot of our messaging is changing um, to health and that um, fitness is such an integral part of health and, and, and being able to combat what is going on with this virus. But we've actually found in our data that when we mention COVID or we mention things directly related to that, we actually have less results. So it is interesting and it speaks to the people that want to be in the gym right now, I think, is that your messaging doesn't need to necessarily have it. It's about the trust and it's about creating the best environment possible, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in that front end message. But what we're doing right now is actually going to be launching a, a, a top tier membership, an exclusive, more elite membership that's actually, um, it's a higher price point, which seems kind of counterintuitive. We're testing it right now in our corporate studios and it's working absolutely phenomenally. And we're talking about people who are willing to come in to spend more, to have that one-on-one -on -one coach, to do nutrition, to do all of those things that do combat what we talked about is like the weight gain or the things that they've done with COVID. And I think it gets their mind in a nice positive place. And we have had amazing success um, upgrading members. And so what it's nice is for our, our, our studios that maybe are having to operate on a slightly smaller membership base, we're talking about more revenue on that same membership base. So we're just, we're adding a little level of protection. And so we're working on launching that right now um, nationwide and really excited about it because all, all early indications are that this is a really phenomenal new membership for us. And this is something we are doing long term and then and really right now just gonna be looking at offering the the virtual version of it for those people who want to wait a little longer who do have the concern and just keeping ourselves open to both that in studio and at home option so that that's kind of where we're at right now that's phenomenal i read one of the first blog posts i read going in in the first few weeks of covid was what people did during the first recession or the last sorry the, the last recession and uh uh it, the guy the, who wrote the article said we created their, their highest level plan ever. Uh, and, and he goes, it's counterintuitive, but you know, that's you can, it's one way to fight, fight the fight, right? Is to say, Hey, you know, if we're not going to be getting the same volume and the same types of customers, let's fight it and let's get, let's go premium, premium, ultra premium. And, uh, and, and that way you can get, you know, maybe a lesser volume, but a higher price point and the folks who really need it. And I'll tell you, I mean, if I were where I'm at right now is a, is a limited place, but it, but it, I would be one who, would be would, would would buy in on on a premium fitness thing because I it would it would it would take me to I, I would almost feel more secure that I'm getting everything I need versus you know something else so love I love that point thank you and I, I do think if there there is a theme here and that's I think that's an important part of it is how you're being creative with your offerings and your plans and and how you can create more value and get get more value for the membership not less is important right discounting in the face of this is not going to be uh that's that that could that could actually hurt you in in the, in the long run um so 
Love, love that, Amy. Ben, anything you want to uh, add to this? And then I want to, I do want to open it up as well after, after these, so you guys can ask some questions, but Ben, anything you want to add? You're still maybe muted. Um, well, let's, Ben, you might be muted, but let's open it up for questions. Uh, any, any questions we'll start before I, the, the nerdwise folks get on here. I think I saw one come in from James. Uh, I know we've got some fit bodies in, in the audience. Anybody chat a question or want to unmute themselves and hit, uh, uh, Tom, Amy, Ben with any of your questions, please do. Yeah, and Patrick, I know I had one that was chatted to me privately, um, so you know it won't be asked publicly. But one of the questions that I had asked me was, um, well, let me just take a look here. Oh, about the online workouts. You know, it was something that was maybe not built in as like a hybrid model, but it is something that now we know on the other side is probably you know creating a lot of advantages. So whether it's Tom, Amy, and I don't know if Ben's still on here, but maybe we'll start with Tom and then go to Amy. Um, you know. Do you do you wish you started online work workout sooner? Is, is the question? Oh yeah, yeah. So I always I always had a, a a dream. I actually tried it. I actually tried it. Oh, uh, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, to run a little six week challenge with some people. But you know, to run two businesses is it, it literally is two businesses. So that was just something I didn't have the bandwidth to do. I, I, I ran it for a six week challenge. It was okay, but I, I definitely learned a lot during the process with you know how to sell on the phone and and have that connection and everything. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so advantages to it is number one, we will never have anyone go on hold again because they are traveling. It's just, it's not in our agreement anymore. We, you can't go on hold cause you travel. We have so many at home workouts, um, that you can do. I can now train anyone anywhere in, in the world. So during COVID, you know, we had a, a, quite a few referrals that don't live here in, in within five miles of my gym. So I had people in Canada, um, Michigan, down South in Texas, all across the country that work out with us and still do every day. Um, as we got into it, it was one of those things where we're like, wow, how long do we have to do this for? Right. Cause it was, you know, it's definitely an additional thing. We do it every day at noon. Um, but now that we have people in a recurring membership that are virtual only, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep making it better and better and having, and having fun with it. Um, so yeah, definitely wish we did it earlier. But that was that was a big benefit of of going through COVID. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, that, we, we always had it in the pipeline to do and to have it as like like we talked about an add on benefit to our current membership, so that when they're traveling, if they're doing stuff like that, it's always available and they have that programming. COVID just shoved it forward. I mean, it it just made it an immediate need. I think for us, we're just really looking at how much of it we want to offer and because it is production the production value i mean uh, tom knows this i'm sure going through it it's a lot and so it's just fitting it into our membership and the way um you know where we fit it in but yeah i think it's always going to be a part now and it's just making sure how to you know how do you keep virtual only members connected into the community that's really important for us because we have yeah. such strong connections with the these members that trying to find that one little connection piece i mean facebook groups things like that always do help that's the one thing we we're so um, we're dependent on purpose on our coach because our coach is such a vital part of the experience. So just making sure that we can also deliver that virtually is really, really important to us. Virtual is not going to go away though. Now it's just a matter of how we, how we carry it forward. And then now our, our next goal is making the platforms that we're using better, easier, yep. all of that kind of thing so that we can then do, you know, online signups and it's not as, as labor intensive for our studios. That's what we're working on right now. Yeah. And I would say the other piece on the virtual is, is the reason, like I always had, I had like 10 to 15 travel workouts that we had, that we had that actually shot for that original, uh, that original program I had that we offered. Um, nobody would do them when they would travel. So, but now that COVID happened, like we had a lot of members that like either wanted to cancel and they just said, I know I'm not going to work out at home. And again, saying, well, I understand that. I don't, I don't always love working out at home either, but it's your only option right now. Could you just give it a try? And we had so many people that now still to this day, even though we're open, still won't come to the studio and love working out from home that would have never tried it because they thought they weren't able to do it, have the motivation or whatever the case. So I feel like COVID actually made it a lot better to offer a virtual service because people were 
more likely to use it and now stick with it because they've done it for so long. Where in the past, it would have just been more work without a lot of people actually utilizing it. Well, it opens up your market and it retrained behaviors. I mean, it yes. really. Yeah, and I, I have a, a question around virtual because it's it's sort of ambiguous. And and uh, Ben mentioned a platform called True Coach. Um, what are what are the tools that you guys are using? I mean, I know we've got Zoom, but what, like what from a virtual perspective, what are the what are the what's the connecting tissue? Do you guys have a True Coach? I know Amy, you guys have like your own your own apps, but what what are the what are, what's the tissue? What's connecting? Your, your, your gym to your members, uh, yeah. what are you guys using? So at my location, we, we film the workout live every day in our Facebook group. We do a Facebook live in our group. We then hit record. We just do it on our phone. We have a projector and stuff set up at the studio. And then we save it on, and we save it on our phone, upload it to YouTube. And then every day we email it out to all of our members with both the link to Facebook, the Facebook link and the YouTube, just in case they don't have Facebook with an explanation of the workout and any announcements that we have. And then as far as the connection, what we decided to do from day one at our studio, we track attendance with how many um, sessions people do, and then we rank them up. And so we decided at the end of every workout, we were going to give a word of the day and then the member has to text in that word of the day to their coach. So we have a texting platform mm -hmm. where people can text in. So they text the word of the day so they then get credit. So that's the connection piece for us. And then the coach can say, hey, great job. And then also during the workout, because it's on Facebook, people comment during it. And, and um, you know, we'll hop in there and, of course, answer all the comments and the questions and things like that. And so we use a texting platform, an email platform that we use to communicate and then we also use something similar to True Coach, which is called Trainerize. Um, we don't always, we don't use it for virtual, but we'll use it in our in our eight week challenge. So that's the technology that we use: is Facebook group, our texting and email platform, and then our um, uh, Trainerize. Cool. Yeah, we have something similar. We we have an email and, and texting platform that we use as well. So we we're actually hosting and using some of the Vin, Vimeo products for the actual uh, pre recorded like. Uh, corporately shot production of workouts and we're using that and delivering it out weekly through our email platform and then the coaches are also using depending on how kind of what their state of open is they were doing the live zooms they've been using their own facebook they've even done a couple instagram lives things like that so they really have leveraged social really heavily along with the zoom support which has been really uh really really important when we were closed to get that coach connection because then they could be with their favorite coach and then we have the, the kind of laying on top of that, the, the weekly delivery of, of workouts for each one of our session types that we're doing. And that's using right now Vimeo, but we're moving to more of an on-demand like OTT style uh, platform. Cool. Good. Uh, Tom, what you're saying around using YouTube, I, I can't help but I have to like suggest or, or, or ask or point this out. That's got to be such a phenomenal SEO opportunity if you guys, you know, headline and subject those you know we're in you know uh group fitness fitness gym in R richardson texas and have all of that in there you you know adding 100 100 200 300 of those and you google you know gym in richardson uh, texas it's got to be you know that's got to be helping you guys win search over time too so i'm sure if you can get a get a few of these things done right it's kind of like multiple birds with one stone you're building a larger web presence for yourself at, while running your business and serving, you know, your, your, your membership there. So yeah. Love yeah. That's something we could definitely do, be better about. Um, we actually, we make, we don't make them the videos themselves public just because it is a paid service. So we leave them unlisted. So you have to have the link, but that's definitely a good idea to make sure we're putting those, uh, those yep. tags in there, even if it is unlisted to drive, to drive some traffic there. Yep. Yeah. yeah and that, then makes, all, that makes sense too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but over, over time, I mean, who knows, like a year from now, if you're doing new, new, maybe you start to right. list those public ones and, uh, uh, who knows, but, yeah. um, uh, Coop, any, uh, any questions and anybody want to chat anything in and, and if not, I can start to wrap things up, but I want to make sure everybody has a chance to, uh, ask Amy and Tom. And I think Ben was on his cell phone anyway. So I think he might've been on the go, but, um, any other questions? Yeah, there are. There's one that was chatted to me privately from Roseanne in upstate New York. She owns a boutique mom and pop. And her question is all about the referral programs and how you guys were really building upon your foundation early yeah. on in the pandemic by using your referral program. And I'm elaborating these questions a little bit. So forgive me, Roseanne, if it's not perfect. Um, 
what do you guys do to incentivize your clients as far as referrals and how often do you not only introduce it, but reintroduce it? Cause so many yeah. times we get on phone calls with our many partners, there, nobody's signing up for a $20 Dunkin' Donuts gift card. So how do you incentivize people yep. in the way that you approach it and reintroduce it? Yeah. Awesome. So when we were in the pandemic straight up, I was very honest with our members, especially when we opened back up. So I have a big board at my gym with everybody, all the members on there where they, they have that rank up board. And normally under the newbie, where, where it's someone to have it hit 25 workouts yet, there's usually 20, 30 names on there. When we opened the gym back up, not only was that just about empty, but the all the other spots, a lot of names had fallen off, right? And then in the studio, we had boxes for everyone to train in place. And when we first opened back up, we would have three, four people in a workout, right? Normally we're used to having 30, right? And we could have at our maximum was 16. So very, very light attendance. And I would just say, hey guys, Love you so much. As you can see, we have a few open spots here in the gym. And as you can look on the board, there's a lot less names up there than there were before. So we would love, love, love to help help your friends and family during this time. And we just ask them like that. So that's as far as how we were asking. And then also every day on the virtual workout before and afterwards, we would ask for referrals. As far as a referral program, what's worked well for us is we do a monthly raffle. So if all people have to do is refer someone into us, even if it's just for one free workout, when they come into the gym, they drop a card into a raffle box. And at the end of the month, we pull out a name and someone wins $100. And that's worked well for us. And then I think it's really important to make sure we're always offering that referral right at the beginning. So if someone's coming on a trial program, let's say you're offering a month for you know, $100 or whatever your intro program is, offer that person when they sign up Hey, number one, they're 50, they'll have 50% 50 better results if they do it with a friend. So if you bring a friend in in your first week and they join the program, you, you'll both get this for half price. So they'll pay half, you'll pay half, you get a two for one. And that works well for referrals as far as generating them. But as far as a referral incentive program, the raffle works well for us. And then as far as putting intention around it, that way every single month at the end of the month or whenever you lead up to the raffle, you have a few days to really put a lot of attention on it and it's rinse and repeat. You're not always coming up with something new. Yeah, we're, we're very similar. We, our coaches are one of the number one reasons that we get good referrals because they've got great relationships with their members and they're not afraid to ask. You have to ask and be yes. authentic in your request. And I think if you're running a program, like a really fun referral program, I always, I always say a couple things. Number one, you have to do something people actually want period. If you don't have something people want, it's going to fall flat. And then the second is it, it needs to be an immediate gratification is what we always try. So every single time you refer someone, if there's something even little you can get or give, that's huge. Like we have a point system. So even if we're doing like a raffle right now in one of our studios, they've got a $500 prize pack where they went even to local businesses and people donated stuff just to get their name in it. And then we packaged it all in beautiful branding, right? In the backpack and all this cool stuff. It's worth about 500 bucks and, we, and we've gotten 60 referrals from it. And this is because we talk about it at the end of each session, we've texted, we've emailed, and then it's immediate gratification because we have a point system that they can then use to buy swag, that they can use to get discounts on vacations. It's a cool program we just use on a regular basis. And so between those two things, it's immediate gratification and you've got something they really want. And then the coach relationship really is that third piece it, of just not being afraid to ask. Everybody knows what's going on in this market. They can see, like you said, Tom, what's happening inside the studio. Um, it, it's an easy conversation to have, but it needs to happen regularly and often. Yeah. Yeah. yeah make That's it, make great. it a, you have to you know, make it a, what do you call it? You know, a, a, a thing of doing business with you is, is we do referrals here. It's just, it's part of what we do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And part of the, part of, part of the process from day one. I love that. Um, guys, I, I have to thank you so much for your time and joining us. I want to do one, one final question, which is just, uh, you know, your, your one piece of advice, the one thing to other gym owners, operators going through this right now. I know Tom, you're going to tell them to swim for the helicopter, but, 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 but what, 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 what's the one piece of advice you want to leave people with, um, going into hopefully, hopefully going into the finish line, but who knows? So what's, uh, what, what would you share or tell people to do? I say, stay the course. Your job is so important. You got in this because you, you love helping other people. So don't let your own crap get in your way, right? Like you have to keep a strong mindset. You don't have to be the most positive person in the world, but just know you're having a bad day. You're having a bad morning. 
you're having a bad month, you don't have a bad life. You have so much ahead of you. And those of us that survive this and get through it, 2020 is going to reap the benefits. And everyone in your life, you're going to go through at least five big, oh, crap moments. Okay, for me, 9-11, my brother dying, and this. I'm at three. I know I got two more coming for me. This is only going to make me stronger as we get closer to them and they come our way. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's 100% about, it's about execution and energy. It's it's knowing that at the end of this, there's going to be people that are going to win and there are going to be people that are going to lose. And I think that the line between them is the people who have that energy. They keep pushing, pushing themselves, just making sure to find the energy. Like you said, it may be a bad day or a bad month, but being able to get past it and keep going and understand that this will pass. And I think that um, it's about the daily execution. Just repeat, repeat, repeat and keep doing it and don't let yourself get in your way. That's what I would say. Huge, huge things for me, I think, that I've seen as people being very successful right now. That's what they're doing over and over and over. Yep. Love it. Uh, you guys, again, thank you so much. And, and thanks for just the support in general and for supporting the community of fitness. I know this, this is going to be recorded. Many people are going to benefit from what you've shared today. Um, and just can't thank you enough for the, the time and contribution. So Amy, Tom, Ben, wherever you are, running towards the storm, like the buffalo that you are. Um, thank you guys, really appreciate it. Uh, we're, you know, we'll talk soon, of course, but uh, appreciate the time and thanks for everything. My thanks, pleasure, guys. thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks.